What's up everybody, it's me Lone. I've just woken up, but unfortunately I've woken up to some pretty sad news and I need to talk about it. Now mind you, this video is going to have minimal editing because I just want to get it out as soon as possible so you know my thoughts and opinions on the matter. So Fallout London. Fallout London, of course, is this giant upcoming DLC size mod for Fallout 4. It's been in development for many years now. A lot of us are very excited to be able to play it. They did go through a delay, but then they finally announced a brand new release date for this month on the 23rd of April. And that day specifically is St. George's Day, so it's quite fitting for the mod in more ways than one, and I'll talk about that more in a second. However, the long looming elephant in the room for this mod was always going to be the Fallout 4 next gen update. Bethesda Game Studios announced the next gen update for Fallout 4 back in October of 2022. They said it was going to be released initially in the following year in 2023. That, of course, didn't happen. They announced a delay, and then a couple of months later, after complete silence, they finally confirmed the brand new release date for the Fallout 4 Next Gen update to also be this month on the 25th of April, just two days after the intended release date of the Fallout London mod. Now, when this was announced, a lot of us suspected, including myself in a previous video, a lot of us suspected that this would absolutely cause issues for the Fallout London mod, especially because it's going to impact the Fallout 4 script extender, which the mod relies on heavily. So because of that, it's probably Probably going to have to be delayed. Now, mind you, this is you know a normal part, a part and parcel process of the Bethesda Game Studios modding scene. Every time Fallout 4 or Skyrim or Fallout 3 gets an update from BGS, it almost always breaks a lot of mods out there especially mods that rely on these script extenders because so many mods rely on the script extenders. They're so important in the modding scene. And when there's an update, those need to be updated first. And then probably those mods need to be fixed a little bit extra to make sure they work with a new update. So because of that, a lot of us were really worried that Fallout London was going to have to be delayed and the script extender will need to be updated first. And they confirm it in today on a video on their channel that unfortunately Fallout London is going to have to be delayed. They initially came out straight away and were like, yeah, we probably know what we need to do, but we're just making a statement on the matter but give us a few days and after a few days they release that statement on their channel so please go check it out in the description below they really nicely explain why they're making this decision i know some people are upset but it makes complete sense but in today's video i want to go through what they said and provide my own thoughts and opinions on the matter so if you enjoyed this video and you find it helpful please like subscribe if you're new with notifications if that's possible but let's get to what they said. So they do confirm that the Fallout 4 Next Gen update is absolutely impacting the Fallout London team, especially because of the close proximity of the mod to the intended release date of the Next Gen update. It's just two days. It's so bloody close. The only other worst day would have been literally on the day or a day apart. But two days is still really bloody close. And it's not even just the close proximity. It's also the order in which things are being released. So hypothetically, let's say the Fallout 4 Next Gen update was going to be coming first on the 21st of April, right? And then two days after, the Fallout London mod was coming out on St. George's Day on the 23rd. In that situation, that hypothetically on paper could have given the modder te modding team enough time to scramble and to fix a London mod and also, also for the script extender team to fix the script extender to hopefully make sure they work in time for the mod's intended release date on the 23rd of April. Hypothetically, that could have happened if the next gen update was coming out before Fallout London. However, that's not the order the things are happening. Ne the next gen update is coming out two days after the intended release date of the Fallout London mod, so that just wasn't possible. Unless BGS got them under NDA and got the script extender team under the NDA and made sure it worked properly with the new update to make sure the Fallout London team could hit their intended release date. Unless they did that, this was an inevitability, it was always going to happen. And as I alluded to before, this was going to be a very special day for Fallout London because it was St. George's Day. And it's not just because the, obviously the mod is set in London, it's not just because a lot of the team for Fallout London is based in London and the UK, but also the project lead for the mod in that video confirmed that in the in-mod law of Fallout London, you would have been starting off with your character on St. George's Day. As you walk out of the cryogenic chamber, it would have been St. George's Day for you. So how fitting would it have been on launch on St. George's Day in real life for us to be playing this game also on St. George's Day. It would have been a really cool fitting moment and unfortunately we're not going to be getting that at least now unless they delay it by a year which absolutely they're not going to be doing. Unless they do that we're just not going to be able to get that fitting moment on launch for the mod. And they do say in that video, they have been ready. They've absolutely been ready to release this mod. They've just been tweaking and testing and making sure that it runs really well. But unfortunately, because of this next-gen update, 
all their hard work simply stands to break and it's causing issues with the release. Now, they did talk about the potential solution of getting people to disable automatic updates or rolling back the updates for Fallout 4 so they can still play Fallout London on the 23rd of April. Or, you know, still play on the 23rd, but then when the update comes on the 25th, have them do all that so they can still play the mod after that. So they do talk about this in the video, but I also talked about this in my previous video, and I'm very glad the project lead confirmed it in their video. This is not an ideal solution for a lot of people out there. I know there are a lot of modders out there with a lot of experience that say, yeah, it's pretty easy to disable updates or make Steam app manifest files read only or to roll back updates. This would have been fine for me. I would have been able to play Fallout London quite easily, just release it on the date so I can still play it. However, that is not ideal for people that don't have modding experience or very limited modding experience or don't want to go through the hassle of having to do that. The Fallout London team want this mod to be played by as many people as possible. And that includes experienced modders and not so experienced modders and non-modders, right? They want to make it as seamless and as easy as possible. So even if they release quite clear and easy to understand guides on how to disable and how to roll back updates if you happen to update it unfortunately that is still a hassle and a lot of people you need to agree simply don't want to go through that process and all that is doing is simply nerfing the potential reach of the fallout london mod that's why it's not an ideal solution and that's why they don't want to do it right and also as well what if you do want to experience the new updates of fallout for next gen the widescreen support the, the improved performance the new creation club items the new quest fixes and all that kind of stuff. What if you want to experience that and Fallout London at the same time? What's your solution there? Do you have to keep changing back the updates and rolling back and, and implementing them and all that kind of stuff? That's also anno annoying as well. I see a lot of people wanting to be able to play Fallout 4 normally and also Fallout London at the same time. And they wouldn't really be able to do that if they had to keep rolling back and, and changing the updates. So because of that, they just know they can't ask people to do that. Even if they released a guide, they made it very clear and easy to understand. And they want the release of this mod to be as close to a real game as possible when it's finally launched. But because of that, they need to take their time and make sure that the Fallout London mod works with the new next gen update. And that's unfortunate, but it's the reality. Now, they do talk about the next-gen release of Fallout 4 and how ultimately it's actually a good thing for Fallout 4. And of course, I've said this in previous videos, the fixes and the improvements that they might bring to Fallout 4 with this next-gen update is going to be good for the game, right? There are so many issues that Fallout 4 still has, whether it's with qu crashing or performance in downtown Boston or whatever it might be. There's a lot of stuff that Fallout 4 needs to get fixed, right? And this next-gen update hopefully is going to be doing that. So this is good for Fallout 4. It is good, and this is what the team said. It is good that Bethesda Game Studios are going back and fixing their old games like Fallout 4, right? And also as well, this next-gen update also has the potential of making Fallout London running even better than otherwise it would have without this next-gen update. So they say in the video that this next-gen update might actually help them push the engine even further and make Fallout London even better than otherwise it would have been. And they talk about, for instance, their UI didn't really work properly with widescreen monitors because it wasn't officially natively supported with Fallout 4. However, with a next-gen update, if that's going to happen, that might let them make the UI work better with widescreen monitors. So that's going to be good, right? And, and because of all the improvements to performance and stability and bugs and whatnot, Fallout London might now actually run even better thanks to this next-gen update. So they're not saying that it's a bad thing, but all they need to do is just update their internal systems. And specifically what they need to update is all the systems that rely on the Fallout 4 scripting center. As I mentioned, the Fallout 4 scripting center is going to need to be updated because of this update. And a lot of the frameworks in Fallout London, like the dialogue systems, for instance, rely on the systems in the Fallout 4 scripting center. Same with the UI as well, and the cool new features that they have with the quests and the perk systems and the 2D art and all that kind of stuff. They mentioned that a lot of that relies on the scripting center, but if the scripting center needs to change, then the Fallout London mod needs to change as well. So they all require fixing when the update drops absolutely zero question and they mention as well that the majority of the world space in Fallout London is literally as dense as Boston is in the base game of Fallout 4. So they've spent so much time in developing new systems to make sure the mod runs as smoothly as possible in the downtown boroughs or in the boroughs of London and if the update comes along those systems are simply going to break as well and the and the mod even if it does happen to work with the new update so it's just not a solution for them to release it you know when this update drops and unfortunately as well a lot of this stuff is out of the team's control because the Fallout 4 scripting center team is a completely different team they are separate even though they're in communication with the Fallout London team they still need to do their own work to fix the scripting center and they like the Fallout London team are volunteers right they're not doing this you know in a paid 
employee capacity. They are volunteers doing this in their spare time. So the Fallout London team can't really expect the Scripting Center team to scramble and make sure that that's updated soon so the Fallout London mod works. That wouldn't be fair for them to expect them to do that, right? They need to wait for the Scripting Center team in their own spare and free time to fix the Script Extender for them to then fix Fallout London and then make sure that it can be released in a stable working condition. So it's out of their control. They can't do that. They have to wait for the Script Extender, extender team. So it could take a week. It could take a month. We just don't know. And that's why we don't currently have a definitive release date for Fallout London. And it pains them. It pains them that they have to do this and delay it yet again. Because again, they've been working on this thing for so many bloody years. And you can cl clearly see the blood, sweat, and tears and effort that have gone into this mod. It's really unfortunate. And it would they would have been in the worst position to make this call, right? They are feeling this the most out of any anyone else so it sucks for them but they are doing what they ultimately feel is right for the mod and i agree with their decision absolutely also in this video they do confirm some other things. For instance, they do confirm that Fallout London can't be played on Xbox. It's just too big. It's going to be like 30 gigs to 40 gigs. So they can't release it through Xbox. This is going to be PC only. And also as well, they talk about something quite strange. And they say Nexus mods can't support the Fallout London mod. It's too big to host on their servers. Which is strange to me. Because I've always thought that Nexus mods can support pretty much any mod. Even if they're big. They do support a lot of big mods out there. Quest mods for instance. But maybe Fallout London is just too big for Nexus mods and they can't distribute it through Nexus mods. You'll still be able to use it with the Nexus mod manager with Vortex if that's what you use. But in terms of distributing the mod, it won't be available on the Nexus website, which sucks. However, they do have a solution. They've been chatting with the GOG team and apparently the GOG team is going to let them distribute this mod to the wider public. So that's really good. But it caught me off guard that the Nexus mod, mod site couldn't support this mod because I thought Nexus could support anything. Anyways, maybe I'm a little bit ignorant on that. But it still seems good that we can get this mod via GOG and good on the GOG team for being able to do that because I know there's issues with supporting mods like this, especially if they might use copyrighted material. I think the Fallout London team has done a lot to ensure this mod doesn't have copyrighted material and they get approval for everything, whether it's using royalty free songs or paying voice actors or whatever it might be. I think they've done a lot of work in that regard to make sure this can be distributed on an official platform like GOG, but it's good on GOG for actually taking the leap of faith and making sure that they they can distribute this mod to a lot of people. So that is good. However, they do say that they've had no insider help to make this thing a standard alone release. In all likelihood, they would prefer to release Fallout London as a standalone thing. If you remember back with Skyrim and Riol back in the day, they could release that as a standalone game because Bethesda Game Studios helped them in that process. But unfortunately, they confirmed in this video that Bethesda has never reached out to the Fallout London team during the entirety of the development process of Fallout London to ensure things like this are actually possible. And this is despite Bethesda supporting Fallout London via social media and on the Bethesda social media accounts like Twitter and whatnot not. They've talked about Fallout London there, but apparently, I think they, they're saying BGS specifically have never reached out to the Fallout London team to make sure that they're okay and to see how the project is going. And because of that, that's probably why we can't see Fallout London released as a separate thing. And that would be so bloody good because it would mean no, no matter what updates that BGS does for Fallout 4, we could still play Fallout London on the side completely seamlessly, right? That would be the most ideal situation, but it needs BGS's backing and support. And apparently they haven't talked to the Fallout London team to be able to do that. So that really sucks. Um, but they do say that when it comes to plans for distribution and installation, they are going to release uh, some sort of installer or maybe a manual download via GOG. So you're going to be getting it eventually, that's fine. But we just need to wait for this update to come and for them to fix everything. So it is unfortunate that we aren't getting an actual release date for Fallout London, but I understand why. There's just too many factors up in the air. And maybe one day we can get a firm release date. But you know what? Because BGS is literally just releasing this update for Fallout 4, there's probably going to be even more updates after that, right? So they're going to keep having to fix this Fallout London mod. So I don't know when's the best time for them to release the actual mod. And then they say in that video, Bethesda never changes. Again, this is part and parcel of the modding process. So let's get to my opinions. And I apologize for stumbling on this video, but I just want to get it done. I'm very, very tired. I think on the Fallout London's team side, this is absolutely the right call. It's the right call because... 
Those other solutions were never really ideal. And they want this mod to be played by as many people as possible, and they want the process to be as smooth as possible. So it's just best for them to wait, wait. even though St. George's Day would have been great for them to do, it's best, best for them to wait to ensure that everyone can play this mod in as good of a state as possible. And again, I said the downgrading option or the rolling back option is not really ideal. And I understand some people might be upset with the team at 4 London. This is like a, a second delay now, if you will. But what other option do they have? Like, what can they really do? If they want this mod to be played by as many people as possible really this is the only solution that they have that's viable so i understand why they're doing this and i support them in, in their decision but let's talk about people being upset at bethesda look i don't want to say that you know bethesda should never update their old games they still should be able to update and have the flexibility and freedom to update their games whenever they want to right and a lot of us were demanding bethesda to release the next gen update for fallout 4 so now we can't be upset at them that they're doing it in april especially when the fallout show is just released when the hype of fallout is at its highest i don't think we can blame bethesda for deciding to release it in this month i think it's an unfortunate situation however i will say i would have liked bethesda to have communicated with the Fallout London team to say, hey, this is coming, how can we help you? What can we do to support you to make sure Fallout London can still hit its release date? Could Bethesda have just simply released this thing maybe on the 21st or the 18th or the 17th or even the 11th of April when the Fallout show was coming out, right? If they could have done that and talked with the Fallout London team beforehand, then maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. So I'm not saying that Bethesda Game Studios shouldn't update their old games, right? That is not a bad thing in and of itself, but I think they probably should have communicated with the Fallout London team, especially because they promoted this on their social media channels. They should have communicated with the Fallout London team to say, hey, how can we work with you and make sure this works properly? Because they've done that in the past with scripting center teams with Skyrim. They have got these guys on the NDA to make sure the scripting centers can release as soon as possible after an update so they probably could have done this with the fallout london mod but unfortunately they haven't so let me know what you think about this in the comments below again this video was rushed but i wanted to get through it and until next time this has been a lone bot wanderer please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight